All right, another video from Norwich 93 CMP. Had um, somebody get stuck a little bit on a lock bar site. So this video is going to be about removing the lock bar site and talking about the different variations and problems that you would run into and stuff. So first thing first is the start of the lock bar started with this thing called a, basically a locking nut. So this outer portion here um, spans over the pinion itself and behind it's the bushing and the spring and etc. And you need a special tool to do that. So the tools they came with, um, the rifles that is, had a, like a little spanner wrench and you were able to unscrew it, but you needed the special tool to do that. This thread of this pinion is different from the later stuff. Um, it is a 630, uh, excuse me, 640. Um, different, when we change over to the square lock bar, which is the type three, the round lock bar was the type two. One of the problems that they had with this is that obviously in combat, you would have to take the tool out to do any adjustments if you had it tight. If you had it too loose, then it would open up and fall off. That's why they went to the lock bars. Um, once they went to the lock bar type of system, what they did was, I'm gonna show you the differences between the nuts themselves or the, the bars themselves. Let's see. If you look at the top, the top of the one on the left is rounded, while the one on the right is uh, squared off. And that's a, uh, on the left, a type two, and on the right, a type three. And if you notice, the holes in the center are different sizes. And that was to accommodate um, a solid pinion versus a peened over pin pinion. And what I mean by that is, here's an example of stock furls. So both of these happen to be Winchester stock furls, but this one is peened and this one is not. And what it can happen is theoretically, a soldier can go on the other side, use a screwdriver and take the, the screw out and screw up the whole system up. So what they did was they started doing a peening process and what that prevented usually, if you didn't torque down on it, was the screw from falling out. Well, once you do that and you can break these threads or strip it out or break the screw itself, um, it becomes useless, combat and ineffective. So the idea is that when you're backing out your screwdriver and you feel that big resistance, that's when the soldier should stop. Well, they did the same thing for the rear sights. And they made a, a, a drill hole, and then they would take a basically a punch in the center and pop it. And that's what this extra space was for on the square one. It would open it up. This one really wasn't that good at all uh, for the peening. Otherwise, you can back this off, you know, counterclockwise, and it would easily fall off. <laughs> that's why this, this system uh, was brought into bear but uh, one of the people that was commenting was having trouble they wanted to clean the whole rear sight but it had a lock bar on it and they couldn't get it apart so what happens is this peening's opened up enough and I've seen it where I think this one might actually have it that little drilled hole in there actually split the pinion so it's split open like this it takes some force to get these off if it's on um, a rifle and you really want to because something's loose or cruddy or it, it's jammed for whatever reason if it's an original rifle I always tell you don't touch it leave it alone um, you're gonna hurt the value but if you know that it's not original and you want to shoot a, a match and it's not that big of a deal to you and you do want to open it up I'm gonna show you a couple of ways you get your standard size metric wrench this is a metric wrench if you've never seen one. I happen to put tape on this one if people are concerned. Don't have to bear down on the thing. Just close it on it. And then obviously left is loose, right? So we take it off. As soon as we break all that, if you can do it by hand, you get to the end, you, you'll be pushing pretty hard. Just make sure that once you do that and you take it off, right okay once you take it off just keep your thumb over here this usually doesn't pop out but sometimes it gets stuck on the inside 
now you can remove the pinion. If the pinion doesn't freely move out, you can slightly tap on this, but I would find another nut, two nuts, put it on here, um, and, and gently tap it out. Um, I'm not a big fan of trying to pry it out or anything like that because once you screw it up, it's screwed up for life. Um, I would just gently tap on this with a, a non-metallic um, hammer or maybe a brass hammer. Light taps, start with light taps first. This bushing in here has got a little D on it, and I'll show you in a minute. It has a D on it and can also get stuck sometimes. Don't forget that this windage knob is screwed into the base. You have to unscrew it. So it's stuck to the base right now. It's clear the base. You and I be able to see this when it's in the rifle. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna put my thumb over the spring area in the bushing and you're gonna yank on it. You might be able to get a little more torque in the backside once you've unscrewed it and have some leeway of putting some kind of screwdriver in there, maybe put the tape on the screwdriver and pulling it off. But make sure it's unscrewed first, obviously from the base. It's still maybe uh, gummed up in here. But if you look at this pinion, Oops, sorry. It's split right there. And that's opened up. And that's the reason why we have uh, trouble getting the lock bars off. Now the lock bar is off. Theoretically, everything should still come apart. But I just wanted to show people how to take those apart, those lock bars. Um, the later pinions don't have the upset area at the end of the pinion. Uh, it's one way to tell them, and they're longer than the ones with the flush nut. The flush nuts are called a short pinion. It's physically shorter uh, than, the, than the Type 3 lock bar and the late sights. But I just wanted to give you that little rundown because it's kind of important. Um, people are getting stuck and I don't want them to be stuck with anything like that. And then and the last thing I say is don't try to force a rounded type of uh, lock bar on a later pinion because of the threads won't work you're going to screw it all up either screw the pinion up or the nut or both up um it takes the square for the later ones all right folks take care subscribe have a good one